So I give myself two weeks to turn this flimsy looking little metal trailer into this overlanding expedition trailer. And we did, we managed it. Well, we kind of did. Now, the problem we've got, like quite a few families as well, there's five of us and these only ever sleep four generally. So we thought if we build one of these and buy one of these, what I mean is, well, a trailer, something self-contained, something that's got everything we need in this. You just pull up, take it off the hitch, open the roof tent and that's it. You're not faffing on with any awnings or any of that crap. You just pull up, take this off, done. Now, when I decided to build a trailer, I didn't take into account the fact that I know nothing about DIY or, in fact, anything about trailers either. And I've never really built anything before, but what I did decide is that I wanted to build something that the kids could sleep on top of, the dogs could sleep inside of, and we can cook outside of. So I don't know what any reasonable adult would do, and, well, I just bought it anyway. We had two weeks before we were away with the kids for the first trip and I needed it already in that amount of time. So I spoke to Nathan doing all the fabrication work and he told us that he's gonna need it to do fabrication and paint for a week. Now this left us with literally seven days to do all of this, me and Danny, no knowledge, no know-how, no past experience. And realistically, we thought, how hard could it be? So once I got the trailer back from the metal fabricator, we started recording episode three, basically where me and Danny mocked up a frame, put it all in, it literally took an afternoon, and we absolutely nailed it, everything worked well, and we were buzzing. Confidence was at an all-time high. However, what we didn't realize at that point is we'd made some errors at that stage, which were then gonna bite us in the arse further down the line, and our bad luck was literally just getting started because 10 minutes after I finished recording that episode, I was pushing the trailer back into where it stays under the log store, and well, this happened. So basically, what had happened was the jockey wheel managed to get stuck on a rock and because I kept pushing at it, well, it bent the frame that the jockey wheel's attached to. So I cried for about two hours. I lost my temper for another hour. Then I text Nathan saying, can you fix it? Can you repair it? Help us, I've got three days. Luckily, he came to the rescue and he says, yes, but I'm gonna need it for at least half a day to get everything sorted on it. Now that left us with down to basically two and a half days to get all the rest done and I hadn't even collected the panelling from Pat yet. So at this point, Nathan had already fixed everything for us. It took him half a day, like you said it was going to, and now it was onto the bits that I've been looking forward to, the easy bits. Basically, speak to Pat, go and collect all the panels that he'd cut and prefabricated that looked fantastic and they were perfectly machined from Northern CNC, as they always are. Stick some screws in, bolt it all together, and then that's it, done. How hard could it be? Surely nothing else could go wrong. <sighs> but it did, again. Now everyone on the channel knows Pat. I've mentioned him loads. Pat is the bloke that literally saves us all the time. Everything in our break, Pat knows how to fix. And Pat also happens to own Northern CNC, who made all of these panels for us. However, Pat, well, Pat's a realist. I'm an optimist. So then when he says, look, this might not go together as well as you think it will, it is the prototype. We'll get there eventually, but things might not fit initially. I went, nah, nah, Pat, everything will go together literally perfect. All we have to do, all we have to do is put some of these screws in. Little did I know at this point that these little self-drilling screws were going to be the bane of my life that whole day none of them would self-drill, which is the whole point in the self-drilling screw. So what I ended up doing is having to drill these holes first with drill bits and we went through at least 19 of them, just smashing every time. So by the end of the day, I was on the bottom and I needed a win. So I broke out these aluminium panels. I got these designed, but well, I designed them, sent them to party, got them cut, they look amazing. And they were meant to be the finishing touch, but I ended up using them on that night just to pick us up a little bit and it worked. So that night, me and Danny were just sitting there looking out at the trailer in all the white paint and we thought the white just isn't working anymore. So we decided to start painting all of the interior black. We started off with the dogs area. Now the paint you're seeing is paint the dogs area with there is, well, it's actually car under sale and I didn't realize that's what I was using. I thought it was stone chip and car under sale not only stinks, but it never dries. And obviously I've got a golden retriever and two other dogs and they were all gonna be in there with black paint that doesn't actually dry. We couldn't have that. There was nothing else we could do. We literally had to rip it all out and start from scratch. So now we literally had two days left before we had to go on the trip and I had to rip all of this out, start from scratch, which I got done on the morning. Then I went to finish it off by putting this door on and then realized that these vents, which I got Pat to cut, 
Well, they were actually in the cupboard. They weren't even in the area where the dogs sleep, which meant all of the bottom bit for the dogs was now going to be unusable for the first trip away. Nevertheless, I thought we'll move on, get the cupboard doors done. And this is where all the woodwork that me and Danny done ended up biting us in the arse because, well, it meant none of the catches were then going to work. So we had to chop some holes and stuff, chop some holes and then beautifully cut doors. And ultimately that was the only way we could get them to work, but we had to do it. So then I come to putting the door on the other side and I used the wrong screws. We heard a bang, the door dropped off, it chipped and I was devastated about that as well. But ultimately it was usable. It was kind of done enough to at least take away and try for the first trip. So we went away with it on our first trip. Now the first trip away was always gonna be eventful and it didn't take long to realize that, to be honest, there was a few choices I've made that didn't really work. The back door opening upwards, the cupboard doors not being supported by anything meant you had to sort of rest them on your head while you rummaged through. The bench didn't have any additional space, so when you were cooking on it, there was no shelves or anything to store anything else on while you were busy. And then two days before we come back, the back door fell off. That was obviously an issue. However, what I soon realized was, well, I'd personally lost me way with the whole thing because initially the plan was to make something that's functional, that serves all the purposes we need to help us enjoy what we want to enjoy. And I got caught up in making everything as perfect as it could be and wanting everything done yesterday with unrealistic deadlines and unrealistic expectations from someone who literally have never done anything like this before. But I decided then, well, it just needs to work. That was the plan in the first place. And for some reason, I'd getting sort of caught up in making it something that was never going to be when I'm the person making it. So I come back, fresh set of eyes, fresh attitude on it, and started chopping away, trying to fix it and make it work for how I want it to be. And well, this is what I've created. So let's have a look around the perfectly imperfect trailer, tent, sleeping, dog, cooking, outdoor, utility, van, trailer thing. And we'll start off first of all with this side, because there's not a lot going on really on this side, if I'm honest. The biggest thing you'll notice on all sides now, though, is you don't have to put your head in anymore to keep a cupboard door open, watch. I was about that and we've literally got them same gas struts everywhere so these are the gas struts here the from screw fix are about six quid and they've made a huge difference if i'm totally honest so moving on we changed the back because like i said that top opening door well it just wasn't working if i'm honest so what we've done now is we've got door opening this way and i've also built inside a little sort of mesh thing which means the dogs can be in here with this shut even when we're outside, not on a bedtime, sometimes you just want them out of being under your feet because they often are. And what we can also do then is to let the sort of dogs out, you open that, open the little gear catch, open the door, they get out or they get in, shut that, lift the butt up, shut the door in the night time and they can actually breathe now because I've put air vents in the right place. Now if you move around, this, well this is the best side now, this is the side that all of the stuff is actually but we've actually done stuff on this side. So first of all, again, satisfying. Now, this actually comes out, which it didn't before. Then again, another lovely opening door. And we've got a nice little gate catch, which locks it in place. This turns this now into a windbreak. Again, we've got nice opening cupboards. And then if you hang fire there, I'll show you my next favorite part, which I thought was a good idea, to make use of these little panels. Now. These are shelves that I've made out of the leftover bench because I had to buy three meters of it and I've still got two meters of it left. Now, you pop them in there. I made some little chucks that just keep them in to keep them straight. And I built two of these because previously, like I said, well, you didn't really have any space to put anything when you were cooking because all of that space was being used up by your hob. Now, you've got these as well. And if you're having a few people over at your little camper van, use this as a little bar area or whatever you want and to be honest they just look sweet and it just I went for like a well it's not it's oak we painted it stained it varnished it and it just looks better that way and then like you say when you are finished and then you do want to tidy up it's just a matter of sliding stuff back in take them shelves off put them in the cupboard shut the doors and you're done it works now and it didn't before and that's been the big, big lesson we've learned is that ultimately as long as it works, that is the most important bit. And I couldn't really be happier. We're going away next week on a second trip. So hopefully 
everything goes well and no doubt again we'll want to change some things but it is a work in progress. It's a prototype. I've never done anything like this before and already a month in to see how far it's came from literally this to this. I'm pretty proud of myself if I'm totally honest. Like there's been some ups and downs. I've been done in at times. But look at it now. It looks amazing. So thanks for watching, thanks for everyone's comments, thanks for all the advice that so many people give us and sort of things that says watch out for this, be careful of that because if you hadn't done that I wouldn't have even known anything, I wouldn't have even done any research about weight distribution had you not mentioned it. Well thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.